Hi monkeys, here Kang. Well, following so-called financial experts on Twitter is generally a bad idea. However, there is an exception. There's one guy, one trader you have to follow at Twitter. And I show you who and why. Do you know David Ryan? No? Okay, now you will know of him. Actually, he was a student of William O'Neill and he was the US investing champion from 1985 to 1987, three years straight. In these three years, he had a performance record of 1,400%. How did he do that? His trading technique, I will show you in the next video. In this video, I will show you what would have happened had you followed his advice on Twitter. I followed this uh, Twitter account for two years, 2022 and 23. As you know, 2022 was a pretty bad market. 2023 was a pretty good market. Regardless of the market state, you would have made money if you had followed his advice. Most financial experts have terrible track records if you follow these guys, but not him. Well, actually he posts one short message at Twitter about once every month. Uh, I will begin at January 31 in 2022. He said, yeah, well, with a Friday's reversal, there could be a rally back up to the 200 day on the QQQ and 50 day on the SPY. Uh, of course, 200 day and 50 day, he means simple moving averages, you know. And actually, QQQ and SPY did exactly do what they were supposed to do. QQQ went up from 353 to 370 and SPY went up from 441 to 457. You might think maybe this was a coincidence. And then he predicted a bear market for the QQQ, also for the Nasdaq. Yeah, on February 12th, he said, yeah, well, um, now from my last tweet, the QQQ hit my target and SPY got close. We are now on the way back on the lows on the QQQ, he said. And actually, the QQQ went down from 353 to 287. So it was a pretty big crash on the Nasdaq, you know. However, there was a short intermezzo in March 16, 2022. He said, well, there could be now a tradable rally, you know, uh, with the major indices back at their February 24 lows. Uh, but be careful in the longer term, he said, you know. And just eight days later, he said, well, the best of the rallies behind us, you know. The astonishing thing is, in these eight days, the Nasdaq went up from 338 to 360. Amazing, right? And then in May 2022, he says something like this. Well, seeing signs, this trend is about, uh, this downtrend is about over. This could be tradable for those fast enough. It should probably be another two or three week rally uh, like we saw in March, he said, you know. And of course, in exactly three weeks, um, the S&P 500 went up from 392 to 417 and the Nasdaq went up from 291 to 300. 14. I thought, well, he was right again. This is amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. In exactly three weeks, the market exactly did what it was supposed to do. Amazing, right? Uh, however, besides this course, he was pretty pessimistic throughout 2022 and he was right again, of course. In June 2022, he said something like this. Bear markets usually have three moves down. The if, the, uh, if a third leg is on the way and based on the previous legs, it could bring the major averages down to these levels. SPY 354, QQ 240, and the Nasdaq Composite 9850. Stay defensive with lots of cash. So he means you should be short or at least out of the market, right? And actually, uh, and the SPY just touches 354 and rebounds. It exactly went down to 354. Isn't that amazing? It's unbelievable, man. Okay, and the QQQ did not go down to 240, but to 254, which was also pretty amazing, I think. Uh, but uh, there was also an intermezzo on July 19, he said, yeah, well, another weak rally attempt on the way. Should last a typical two or three, three weeks, unless new names start making price moves that follow through on volume. And uh, on August 9, um, he did an after service. Uh, so uh, he cares about us, you know, because he said on July 19, yeah, well, there could be a weak rally. Until August 9, he comes back. Hi, the rally from June 16 looks to be nearing the end. 
Today the market moved into nine months of overhead supply and blah blah blah, you know. And unbelievably, from July 19 to August 9, the spy went up from 386 to 411, and the QQQ up. Uh, from 293 to 317. And the guy said on August 9, uh, the rally looks to be needing the end. Actually, the highest point came on August 15, just six days later. And downhill it went. The, when the QQQ went down from 326 to 269. This is amazing. And so, on October 19, he called the bottom, you know. He said, yeah, well, tradable bottom is likely in, you know. Most indexes pulled back to pre-COVID highs. Near-term positives should include blah, 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 you know. <coughs> and uh, in November 29, just 40 days later, he said, yeah, well, rarely since the October losses indexes are both close to the 200-day moving averages. Time to take profits, he said, you know. In just 40 days, the spy went up from 369 to 395, and the QQQ went up from 269 to 200. 80. And unbelievably, he made the call on November 29. Yeah, well, now let's say something. And the high point came on November 30. Just the next day, it was the high point, you know. And I, now, really, I have to ask, uh, Mr. Ryan, are you God? Are you human? And now, and of course, his petitions went on in 2023. On January 7, he advised us to buy, you know. He said, oh, well, tradable rally on the way, you know, another rally that could take the SPY back to 410. And actually, on February 3, SPY went back to 410. Wow. Oh, yeah. And he predicted the range between 390 and 431 on February 3. And as you can see on the chart below, um, he was not entirely correct. And this was the one where he was almost right. Because uh, actually, um, a SPY went sideways for about three months. Um, but uh, it undercut 390 shortly in February, you know. So uh, actually, uh, the range was not between 390 and 430. But somehow, uh, some somewhere between 385 and um, uh, around 420, 425. So he was not exactly correct, but still very good. And on March 30, uh, maybe he made the first wrong call. Uh, he said, yeah, well, the market has settled down. Uh, look on for the market to rally, but the SPY must first uh, get above 400. Uh, uh, and the top of the range should be 420 to 430, he said. Unfortunately, the rally stopped around 400. 15, you know. However, uh, um, uh, if you followed this advice and went long on the spy, uh, you would have made 0.6% until his next call. So he was wrong uh, when he said that spy um, uh, uh, should go up to 420 or 40, 430. It didn't, but still you made money on that call. And on April 26, he made another call. Uh, this was a really wrong call, the first really wrong call in the uh, in one and a half years. Okay, so Mr. Ryan is no, not, not a god. He's just a human, you know. Uh, so he said, the spy failed to surpass the um, February 2nd high and is now rolling over. Look for another move back to the lower end of the trading range that has existed since June 2022. QQQ has been a stronger index, but also could drop 10 to 15 per person from here. That did not materialize. Actually, on May 18, spy surpassed the February 2 high. So uh, I'm pretty sure if um, David Ryan went short the Nasdaq he would probably have closed out the position on uh, on May 18 because it surpassed the February too high, you know. And then uh, if you sold out your short position on May 18, you would have lost lost 3.3 percent. Okay, so you lost something, but it was not that bad. But and actually, the Nasdaq did not go down. The market continued to rally until the end of July. So on this call, Mr. Ryan was wrong. But probably uh, he would have been stopped out on May 18, where he would have lost 3.3%. And then uh, very unfortunate things happened. Actually, William O'Neill, uh, his great friend and mentor, died. And David Ryan's father, he also died, and which uh, came as a big shock. And um, yeah, David Ryan, of course, was very sad, you know. Uh, so uh, he didn't go on Twitter. Uh, uh, he went to mourn, you know. And he uh, came back in July and August. So uh, between April and July, there were no real tweets on the market. So uh, he made a call in July, which was 
pretty ambiguous, but the August call was very clear. He said the QQQ has seen its high for the year on July 1923. Nvidia's earnings marked the final move in tech, raise cash and get defensive. So he was advising us to get short, you know. And of course, a few days later, Nasdaq began to tank. It went down from 367 to 345. And then he precisely called the rally on October 27. You know, uh, he says something like markets are very oversold and has hit at least a short term bottom. If your time frame is short enough, you can trade this market. I still believe the Nasdaq will not see the new highs this year, as I mentioned late August. And actually, the Nasdaq went up from 347 to 390. And interestingly, or uh, uh, really, Nasdaq did not see new highs for this year. So it went up from 347 to 390, but did not surpass uh, the year's new high. This is really amazing, right? Amazing, man. The Nasdaq just went straight up for one month. And now he says the best of the rally is over. So on December 1, he said the QQQ reversal yesterday and the continuation today is telling that the best of the rally is over. Tight to take profits and reduce the invested position. Yeah, well, given his track record, I would not bet against him. And, and wait a second, I gathered this entire track record from 2022 and 23. Now look at this, you know, how many positions uh, uh, would you have? Around 15 positions uh, were already liquidated, right? The first position is beginning in January 31, 2022. Uh, you would have closed out in February 12, um, uh, 2022 and so on. And you had long and short positions. And incredibly, you would have made um, uh, profits in 14 of the 15 calls, you know, and his worst call was a minus three person call on April 2023. And if you followed this advice every time, you would have made 170 percent in 2022 and 23. How crazy is that, man? In 2022, um, the Nasdaq S&P 500 tanked more than 20 percent, you know, and 23 uh, was a good market, but not that good. Uh, but if you followed all this advice on Twitter, you know, you would have made 170 person. Isn't that a great guy? Now to sum up, following financial experts, this is generally a very stupid idea. However, uh, if you know another such guy, please just tell me, please. David Ryan is an exception. Do you know another exceptional guy? Please tell me, man, please, you know. However, so if you have a so-called expert, it is very important to backtest his calls and to find out if you really would have made money or not. Never follow someone's advice until you've got the track records straight. This is very important. The next uh, video will be about um, uh, David Ryan's trading techniques. So you, uh, you'll you probably be very, very excited. Thank you for seeing the video. Uh, please um, push the subscriber and like button below. Thank you very much.